Let's start with some basics. What's software safety engineering? Well, safety is a system property. It's beyond just correct code. Yes, it's really nice to have correct code. If you have bugs in your code, it's going to be difficult to get safety, for sure. But just having perfectly written code that exactly meets the requirements does not necessarily get you to safety. That means, of necessity, safety engineering is more than just looking at requirements and implementing code. Part of it is writing the requirements, but even more is understanding that safety affects the requirements. The heart and soul of most safety engineering has to do with hazard mitigation. The idea is you identify the hazards, things that can go wrong. If X goes wrong, that could result in a loss event, and we need to understand how that could go wrong and what the loss event is and things like this. Those things that can go wrong include hardware failures, tool defects, environmental surprises. These are systems that are operating in the real world. And so assumptions that, for example, you will never have a computational defect due to a radiation-induced upset, that's not the real world. Those things happen in the real world. So you have to account for those, especially if you're deploying at large scale where lives are on the line. Once you have a list of hazards, for each hazard, you predict the risk. And typically, the risk is probability times consequence. The idea is that if you have something that can be really bad and it happens all the time, you need to do something about that. If you have something that has a very, very low consequence and it almost never happens, maybe you can just live with the risk. The things in between are more typical, and that's where you see the hazards being converted over to risks, and then you do risk mitigation. The tricky part for all of safety engineering is probably never times near infinite consequence. What's zero times infinity? Well, there's a lot of economic pressure to say, well, we're not going to worry about it because it'll never happen. But usually when people estimate the probability, they're a little bit optimistic and things tend to happen that people thought wouldn't happen. So what you really need to do in safety is weight it a little bit more towards the outcome, that even if you think it'll probably never happen, if it's a really, really bad outcome, you still have to find a way to mitigate the risk. If you think about nuclear power plant safety and aircraft safety, you'll find that they spend a lot of effort on things with very low probability, but catastrophic outcomes, and even then, sometimes they get surprised. Once you've figured out all the risks, then you have to mitigate them. For each hazard, you say, here's the risk, and the higher the risk, the more work I put in to make sure it's mitigated down to a place where the entire system has a reasonable remaining acceptable risk. The mitigation typically involves engineering rigor, such as process quality, doing some analysis on the system, some testing, some redundancy patterns, and so on. It also involves the use of functional safety. Functional safety is there may be an internal defect for your system, so you take approaches to mitigate those defects that are eventually going to happen. For example, if you have a malfunctioning component, you detect that it's malfunctioning and you shut it down to get yourself to a safe state, potentially with some sort of backup system taking over if it seems necessary. There's also safety of the intended function, SIDIF. The idea there is that your requirements in the real world will never be complete. There'll always be things that you missed if you're operating in the real world. That means you need resilience to requirements gaps. You have to deal with inconsistent sensor data. You have to be able to at least remain safe even if you can't operate in unexpected environments. The big idea here is safety engineering is not simply going from requirements to perfect code. Safety engineering explicitly deals with understanding the hazards in your system and mitigating risks because no system is ever perfect, but a safe system still has to deal with the fact that that's the case.